All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the online recorded Get Started session. My name is Hannah Brown, and I am the coordinator of admissions and outreach uh, at Front Range Community College at the Westminster campus. Um, so this Get Started session is a recorded version of the session that we offer on campus, and there's a really a couple points to this session. One, um, there are several steps that you need to go through to become a student here with us, and we want to make sure everyone knows all of those steps. Um, so I will be going through the enrollment checklist with you all. And then also we want to make sure that everyone is familiar with the online tools that they have, including your email and your eWolf student account. So I will also be showing you where to find those things um, and how to use them on our website as well. So hopefully it's helpful in, in getting you up to uh, being able to register for classes and then also showing you how to register for classes too. All right, so um, I'm not really going to talk about it during the session very much, but I do want to point out that if you are interested, there's some great information on Front Range's website, which you can see is frontrange.edu here on my screen. If you go over here to Programs and Courses and click on Academic Programs, you'll actually be able to select a campus and see which academic programs we offer. You'll be able to see a lot more about the different degrees and certificates and then lists of classes that you need and things like that. So um, again, this session is not designed to talk specifically about the programs, um, but do know that that information does live on our website and you can check that out um, on your own. All right. Uh, what we want to talk about today um, is the, the getting in, how to get started piece. And this is our enrollment checklist here. So these are the steps that you need to take to be able to register for classes and then attend the classes. And so we'll kind of go through each one here. Um, the first thing, of course, to do is apply for admission to Front Range Community College. Um, many of you may have already done this, but uh, we do need you to fill out the application first. It's a free application, and everybody that applies is admitted, and all you need to do is click on the online application link or the Apply Now link, and it will lead you into our um, online application. Um, you'll need to go over here and create an account if you haven't already, and then once you have, you can use an email and password um, to log into your account. Um, if you've already applied for admission, you can log into your account again to see your student ID number, um, but otherwise you'll go through this process and make sure that you get into um, our uh, application and get that student ID. So um, that's the first thing to do. Um, with the application for admission, again, it's free, everyone's admitted. Um, you will receive a student ID number afterwards, and that student ID number is what you'll need to then um, go through the rest of the steps here on campus. The other thing that we want to make sure that you do is to um, apply for your FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Um, the FAFSA is a form that you will use to apply for any grants, which would be free money loans, which would be money that you'd borrow, but then you'd have to pay back later, and then also work study, which would be getting a job on campus. Um, you can learn much more about the FAFSA on our website. Um, you can see where you would need to create a FAFSA ID, FSA ID, complete the FAFSA, and that does give you links here to the different places that you'll need to go. Um, and then also uh, the other things that you'll want to do to make sure that you receive aid with us. Um, completing the FAFSA is very important. Um, it is a form that you fill out every year. So if you are planning to take classes in the summer 2017 semester, the summer is actually the end of our academic year, and you'll want to make sure that the 2016-2017 FAFSA is the one that you've completed. Um, for starting in the fall, fall 2017, you'll actually want to make sure that the 2017-2018 FAFSA is filled out for them. So if you're going to do classes in the summer and the fall, you want to make sure both FAFSAs are filled out. If you're just going to be joining us in the fall, uh, you'll want to make sure that um, the newest one, the 1718, is the one that's completed. So make sure you've got the right FAFSA form filled out. You can see FAFSA, um, Front Range of School Code here on our website. It's that 007933 number. Um, once you complete the FAFSA and you enter our school code, that will get your information sent here to Front Range. Um, so it's important that you either search for Front Range or you enter our school code, and then it gets your information sent here. 
Okay, like this website also explains um, the way that we let you know about your award and anything else that you need to do is through your student email and your eWolf. So that's definitely something that you'll want to check. And again, I'm going to show you how to get on there, on here um, in just a little bit. Okay, again, you can find lots more information about the FAFSA um, right there on our website. Okay, so getting your applications done is the first step. Attending this Get Started session is your second step. Um, so you're doing that right now, that's great. Um, our third step is applying um, or taking the assessment test. So this might be the step that many of you find that you're at. Um, what we do here at Front Range is that we want to make sure everyone is in the appropriate level of class. And so we do, um, to do that, we offer an assessment test called the AccuPlacer. Um, the assessment test is something that you do on campus in a proctored testing center, um, and you would need to do it if you're taking any classes here at Front Range unless you're exempt. So um, here under step three, there's a form that you can fill out here. It says complete this form link. This leads you to the placement form. This placement form will lead you through the different exemptions for the assessment test and then let you know if you need to take it or not. So I definitely recommend filling that out. Um, <clears throat> you can also see the exemptions on our website. Um, so again, there's the form link. Um, generally, folks are exempt in a couple of ways. One is if you have taken college level courses at a regionally accredited institution, um, you are exempt from the assessment test because you've already demonstrated you're at college level. Another big way is if you've taken the ACT or SAT within the past three years, you'll see that you can um, have certain scores that exempt you as well. Um, the last way is if you have taken the AccuPlacer um, in the past three years, like you were um, starting at Front Range before, uh, you do not need to take it again if it's been within three years. Okay, so if any of those things apply to you, again, fill out the placement form um, and you're exempt from the assessment test. If none of those things apply to you, you can still fill out the placement form, but know that you'll need to do the assessment test as your next step for getting started here at Front Range. Um, when you look at our website, you'll be able to see that there are some study guides, uh, there are some uh, testing centers and things like that. Um, so there's lots of great information here on our website. You can see the study guides here on the left-hand side. Um, so if you need to review or anything, you can definitely make sure that you're doing that um, prior to taking the test. Um, you will want to contact the testing center of the course near uh, of the campus near you. So you can click on that um, and then pick a campus. Um, some of our campuses require appointments or are only open during certain times, and so it's great to make sure that you um, call the campus just to confirm when you can come in for that. Okay. Um, the AccuPlacer is an untimed test. There is no fee to take it. You'll need to just go in. It's done on a computer. Uh, it tests your skill level in English and in math. And you'll need to make sure that you have a photo ID and your student ID number with you to be able to take the test. Um, if you are not um, close to one of our campuses, you'll notice that you can use this form here on our website to take the test in another state. Um, again, it still needs to be done in a Proctor testing center, but you can organize that at another place. So um, do know that, again, that is here on our website, and that is the next thing that you'll need to do. Okay. All right. Um, step four is meeting with an academic advisor. An academic advisor's role is to help you figure out what classes you need to take based upon whatever your goals are here at the college. So if you are interested in a specific degree or certificate here with us, there are some classes that you'll need to take to do that and uh, an advisor can help you with them. Um, if you are interested in transferring somewhere, they can help you make sure classes are, are gonna transfer or provide you with the people to contact on that. And if you've taken college classes somewhere else and you're interested in transferring in, you can um, make sure to meet with an advisor and provide your unofficial transcript. They can do an unofficial degree audit and things like that. Um, academic advising is offered on our campuses and um, generally, again, you want to schedule an appointment, though there are some drop-in times. So again, if you click on the link under step four, you can find more information about the advising at different campuses. And you can contact them to find out the hours and see if you all are able to set an appointment. 
Um, again, if you are exempt from the assessment test, you'll want to make sure to bring proof of that to your meeting with the academic advisor. So again, unofficial transcripts, ACT or SAT scores, things like that. Um, and if you have taken the assessment test or need to do that, you want to make sure that you've taken it before meeting with an advisor. You generally get your scores right away, so you can meet with them pretty soon after taking it, but they will need those scores to interpret um, to start off your advising. Okay. Um, with the advising, again, um, if you've talked to other institutions, have other documents, please make sure to bring those. Um, there are some availability for phone appointments for advising if you need that as well. Um, so again, just contact the campus and, and, and make sure that you know um, and let them know exactly what you need uh, to get that help. We do generally have some specific advisors for certain populations, some um, things like international students, veterans. Um, so again, contact the campus and see if there's a specific advisor that you need to meet with um, for that as well. Right. Um, the advisor will remove the hold on your account, so it is important that you meet with them, um, you are necessary that you meet with them prior to registering for classes. Um, so again, remember to make sure to do that. So the fifth step, of course, is to register for classes. Um, registration opens on a certain date for students, depending on the semester that they're planning to attend. Right now, um, we are gearing up for the summer 2017 registration and the fall 2017 registration. Registration for summer 2017 will begin on April 11, 2017. And registration for the fall semester begins the week right after that on April 18th, um, 2017. So if you've completed steps one through four, you've got the hold removed from your account. Um, starting on those dates and any time afterwards, you can get onto your eWolf account and register for those classes, okay? If, you've, if the date has passed, but you have not completed these steps one through four, you do need to complete those first um, before you're able to register, okay? When you're ready to register for classes, though, you can also, um, you will be doing that on your student account on eWolf. So from our website, frontrange.edu, you'll be able to go to our e your eWolf student account by clicking on the eWolf link at the top of the page. When you click on the link, you'll get to the login information. You'll see that you'll need your student ID number starting with the S, and you'll use your six-digit password, as it mentions here, as your initial password, or your six-digit birth date, excuse me, as your initial, initial password. Once you've used that, you'll need to set a new password and set a security question, and you'll use that new password to get in. So um, I have a mock student here. Um, that I will sign into so you can see. Um, and I've already changed the password there. Okay, so once you're in eWolf, um, a couple of things to note, you'll have, um, you'll always be uh, brought to the dashboard. So there's some quick links, announcements, important dates, all that stuff here. Um, and then you can also see a couple of other really important tools at the top right-hand corner. You can see student email, um, you can sign out and you can reset your password. Um, and also if you've applied to other community colleges, you can make sure that you're selecting the Front Range Community College. Uh, your student email is a very, very important tool, okay? Um, we use that as your main method of communication between the college and you as a student. So pretty much everything that you need will come to that email. So it is really important that you're checking it. You can see it's really easy to check. All you have to do is click on that link. You'll want to be checking your inbox and the clutter folder just in case some of that um, front range emails gets sent there. Um, but again, it's really important that you're checking your email because that's where we're letting you know about pretty much everything that's going on on the campus, um, upcoming dates and deadlines, financial aid status, waitlist status, all of those things. So it's really critical that you check your student email. All right, so um, a couple of things. When you're ready to register for classes, you'll see that there's this registration tab. And if you click, uh, if you hover over it, um, there are some drop down um, options. But you actually just want to click on the registration tab there. Um, and then you'll get to this register for classes menu. What you want to do is click on this look up classes link. 
and then select a semester. Okay, you can see for summer and fall. Um, we'll select fall for now. And then when you get to this lookup classes screen, you actually want to click on advanced search. And the reason you want to do that is to have access to more fields. Okay. Um, so generally an advisor lets you know the subject and the course number of the class that you should be taking, but you may have other search criteria that you want to use and that's what you can um, enter here in these, these other boxes. Okay. Um, so a class that almost everyone has to take here at the college is uh, English 121 or College Composite, English Composition 1, the general English class. So I'll just go ahead and choose that one for an example. Um, I won't use any of these other boxes uh, just to show all the options except for this campus box, okay? Campus is really important. You'll notice here that the de default is all, and so if you are planning to take classes on campus, you want to make sure that you select the campus that you're planning to attend. Um, the campuses of Front Range are spread out, so it can take between 30 minutes to an hour to drive to different campuses. So if you don't intend to take a class at these other campuses, it's really important that you don't select those campuses, okay? So I work here at the Westminster campus, so I'm gonna make sure to select that. And then I'm also interested in taking some online classes. So I'm gonna use the control key to also select the online options as well. But you'll see that none of the other campuses are selected, okay? Now you'll notice that we have two online sections or systems. Um, the first one listed, the CCC online, those are the Colorado Community College system classes. So what those, that means is they're taught by anyone within the 13 community colleges in Colorado. Um, and the students are also based at any of those 13 community colleges. So they're uh, oftentimes larger, kind of run on their own schedule, things like that. Generally, our students at Front Range prefer the FRCC online classes as those are taught by Front Range instructors. Um, and generally, students find that they can get in contact with their instructors much faster and then um, just have a better experience. So you can um, definitely take either of the classes, but just know that there is um, a difference there. Okay, so I've set all my search criteria. I'm gonna click section search. And that's gonna allow me to look at all the different classes that are fit my criteria. So if you see here under subject and course, it's all the English 121, and then the section shows me the different sections of the course. And if I go over here to title, I'll see that they're all the English composition one. So I know that I'm right, looking at the right course. If you're planning on taking an on-campus class, the days and the times will show you what days the class meets and then what time. So M stands for Monday, W stands for Wednesday. If you see a T, R down here, T stands for Tuesday, R stands for Thursday, okay? We've got Friday, F, S is Saturday, U is Sunday, so you'll know those abbreviations. You can see that most classes run two days a week here um, at Front Range and that, um, or on a Westminster campus, and that um, they have different times ranging um, our classes start about as early as 7.30 in the morning and then go to almost 10 o'clock at night. So there's a lot of different options in terms of time. Um, for online classes, if you scroll down here, there's TBA. TBA indicates that it is an online class because there's not a specific day or time that you sign in to complete your class. Um, so it's listed that way. Um, once you've decided on a class that works for you, um, you can go over here to the number columns. You can see the cap, the capacity of students allowed to register for the class. The ACT is the actual number of students who have registered for the class. And then the REM is the remaining spots left in the class. Um, obviously for this semester, at the recording of this session, this semester is not open for registration yet, so no one has registered for the classes. Um, but this will be shown in real time, so you'll be able to see it once that um, does become available. Um, once you have found a class that you're interested in and you've made sure that there's still some remaining spots left, at the far left-hand side under Select, instead of an NR, which stands for Not Registerable at this time, um, there will be an open checkbox, and you will just click on that, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen, There'll be a button down here that says register, and you'll be able to click on that and then register for that section that you've selected. 
okay? Um, if you're not able to register for the class, you can see that there might be a wait list here, that's the WL columns. You can use the course registration number to um, wait list for a class. Back on your eWolf, if you click on Add or Drop Classes, and you'll pick the um, fall, then you'd be able to enter the CRN number here and then select waitlist. Um, and then you check your student email to find out if your name comes up on the waitlist. Once you're, you're sent that email, you only have 48 hours to uh, actually um, register for the class. So it is important that you check your student email if you're waitlisted. Um, but for be your best bet is to just make sure to get into the class um, that is open and not waitlist if you don't need to. Okay. Um, other information here, you can see who the instructor is, the dates between which the class runs, what the location of the class is or if it's online, and then any attributes. So all of that information is here on the Lookup Classes screen. So again, you use that to search for the classes, to see what's available, and also we'll be able to use that screen to register once that becomes available as well. Okay. Um, so that's how you will register for classes. Um, it's important also to make sure that you uh, Authorize your cost stipend if you are a Colorado resident. COS or COS is the College Opportunity Fund, and that is free money from the state of Colorado um, to help offset your tuition. Um, if you applied for admission to Front Range and you are a Colorado resident, you have the option to have us apply for COS for you in our application. But if you don't know if you did had us do that or you didn't have us do that, again, click on the Payments and Financial Aid tab, and it brings you to the screen. If you scroll down, there's a College Opportunity Fund area, and you can apply for the cost and then also authorize costs, which will, you will be able to do after you register for classes. Okay. Um, payments and financial aid is also where you're going to take care of the payment process. So if we go back to frontrange.edu again, let's see, okay, um, you'll find here on the Getting In tab that after you register for classes, the sixth step is to pay your tuition. You can find out about tuition and fees, how much things will cost here on our website by clicking on the link and you can see current tuition rates, um, a price cal calculator, things like that. Um, but the payment is actually going to take place on your student account on the payment and financial aid area. Okay. Um, what is important to note is that you, there is a payment deadline here at Front Range Community College, and it's generally about a week at, or so after classes have started. So for the summer semester, that means it will probably be in June, and for the fall semester, it will probably be at the very end of August. Um, you'll want to be checking the announcements in your student email for information about the payment deadline, but it is critical that you pay by that deadline so that you avoid getting dropped from classes for non-payment. So please make sure that you are paying by that date. There are a couple of different ways that you can pay. You can, of course, come to campus. There's cashier's offices on the campuses that you can pay in full. You can also sign up um, here under Payments and Financial Aid. You can sign up for a payment plan. So you can set up a payment plan here. Um, the payment plan allows you to split your payments up throughout the semester without accruing interest, but it does cost $35 to sign up for. So it is important that you're, you're paying attention to that. And then also that you're looking at um, when you sign up, because if you delay signing up, you may have a down payment in addition to those $35. Um, and it will also determine how many payments you're split up um, throughout the semester. Payments are due on the 5th of each month, and um, you will see more, again, here on this website to learn more about the um, payment plan. If you are using financial aid, um, that's the other big way of, of paying for your classes. 
Um, again, it's really critical that you're paying attention to your eWolf student account. Um, here under, um, again, payments and financial aid, you'll be able to see any financial aid requirements that you have for your year, okay? So um, right now on the 2016, 2017 is for summer, but you'll be able to choose a different age year as well. And then anything that shows up in the requirements box is something that you definitely need to take care of, okay? So this student needs um, tax transcript, verification forms. Okay, anything that shows up here, you do need to make sure to take care of as soon as possible and definitely before the payment deadline because that means that um, you don't have financial aid if you have outstanding requirements. If you check over here in the status area, once those check marks turn green, that means that you've taken care of them, but if they're blank, then that means that you're not, um, ha you don't have those taken care of and you don't have financial aid. So you'll want to make sure that you're taking care of these as much as, as soon as possible. A lot of the verification forms are just links that you can click on to bring up the form, so you can do that. And the tax transcripts um, you order from the IRS, and there is instructions that you can find to um, also uh, uh, order those from our, our um, financial aid office can assist with that. Okay. So again, just make sure that you're uh, taking care of your financial aid requirements as soon as possible and that you're definitely doing it prior to um, the start of uh, the payment deadline. Okay. Once you've taken care of requirements, you can actually accept your award also here on your eWolf. Um, you'll be able to select the aid year and then again, um, this student is not awarded right now because they still have additional things that they need to do. Um, but you will be able to see that here um, on your eWolf student account as well. Okay, oops. So again, um, register for classes and then pay your tuition um, and make sure that you do that by the payment deadline. All right, a couple of last things here. Um, in addition, um, after you've enrolled, there's a couple of other things that you want to do. One thing that's not listed here on the website is that you will receive a bank mobile card in the mail in a green envelope. Um, it does look like a junk mail credit card application, so be, watch out for that. Setting up a, a refund preference through bank mobile will be how you'll receive any money that Front Range owes you, whether it's just a refund from you paying for a class that you dropped by the drop deadline um, or financial aid. So you definitely want to watch out for that um, and then take care of that. We also encourage you to sign up for new student orientation here on the college campus. Um, again, you select the campus that you're planning to attend. There is an online orientation that you will take as well. You've never taken online courses. Um, new student orientation is really geared toward first-time college students to help them get more familiar with the college um, process, um, get them connected to the college and all sorts of things. So it's a really great event for, for those folks. Um, so you do want to sign up for the, camp, the, the new student orientation on your campus. We also encourage you to get your student ID. Um, your student ID is your, your student card or your WOLF card. It does cost $5 to get at the Student Life office on your campus, um, but it can do different things like get you into the fitness centers and the learning labs. It can be activated as your library card um, and different things. So definitely encourage you to do that. We also want you to have, uh, we already talked about your email account um, and getting that set up and checked. But we also want you to purchase your books before classes start as well. Um, you can see that it says um, you can purchase your books online, but you can also just go here and search for the books that you need for your classes. Okay, so you can use our bookstore website to do that. Um, you can also go into the bookstores and find the books that you need, but we really encourage you to make sure that those books are bought prior to starting classes. Another place that you can find that information again is on your eWolf. Under My Classes, you can click on Buy Books. And again, you don't actually have to buy them from here, but you can at least search for the books that you need. Okay. 
Um, eWolf is, again, a great tool. You can see a lot of different information about my classes. So D2L, or Desire to Learn, is the online component of your classes or what our online classes are also run on. So you can sign into that. Um, degree Check is like an online academic advisor. You can see transcripts, find out more about resources. So there's lots of different things that you'll want to be able to access on eWolf. Um, and then, of course, the most important thing is to actually attend classes, okay? Um, the classes for our upcoming semesters, the summer 2017 semester will begin on May 30th, and the fall 2017 semester will begin on August 21st. So at that point, you want to make sure that you're going to class, that if it's an online class that you're signing in, you're checking things, um, and that you're participating, that you're ready to go by those dates. Um, really excited to have you be in classes, and we want you to be there, um, and you want to avoid getting dropped for not showing up by definitely being there, so make sure that you're doing that. And then also make sure that you have a great semester. We have a lot of great resources on our campuses to help you succeed, things from academic support labs and tutoring to advising. Um, so please make sure that you're reaching out for those as well during the semester to make sure that you have um, a great semester as well. Um, the most important thing to remember is just that there are lots of people here at Front Range Community College that want to help you and assist you with any steps or anything that you get lost and stuck on or lost in. So please make sure that if you choose a campus, uh, request information, um, go up here to directory or contact us, there's lots of different ways to get contact information for the different offices and people on campus. So I really encourage you to do that um, and make sure that you are reaching out to us um, here. You can see our main phone number here. Um, and if you, there's anything at all that you need, please let us know what we can do to help you. Again, use your eWolf and our website for um, lots of assistance. There's lots of information here. Use the how to get started checklist to make sure that you're getting through all the steps and use the links to um, find out any more information. Um, but thank you so much for listening in today, and hopefully that was helpful in helping you understand how to get started here at Front Range. We're looking forward to seeing you here as a student.